If you've figured out how to get leads, the next thing you need to know is how to convert them into sales. Cha-ching! So how do you make the jump? Well, stick around. I'm gonna share with you my strategies for exactly how I take those leads, turn them into sales, and turn that into a multi seven figure business. Leads are like new friends. In order to build the relationship, you have to nurture it. Nurturing is the most critical step when you have a new lead because that's what's gonna take it from opening the door into a sale. So that's the first thing we're gonna talk about today. Then we're gonna talk about my don't miss the bus strategy that explodes your conversions. Then I'm also gonna share with you what you should offer at every step of your marketing that qualifies your leads and encourages them to buy. There's three steps towards a sale, lead generation, lead nurture, and lead conversion. So it only makes sense that after you generate that lead, the next thing you need to do is nurture them. The fruit is in the follow-up. It's not just that you generate this lead and you hope that they figured out what to do next. It's kind of like dating your audience. If you want to build a relationship, you have to show up. You have to nurture that relationship, get to know each other, provide value for that person. And the other thing you're going to want to provide is the call to action. What's the next step that you want that person to take? So let's say you generate a lead. They're on your email list. What do you do next? Well, you don't ghost them and play hard to get thinking that they'll come to you. If you want to grow that relationship, you show up for them. So maybe you put them through an indoctrination sequence, like an email sequence, where you let them in on your secrets, you tell them about your story, you bring them towards your value ladder. This is why we say the fruit is in the follow-up. When people sign up for your list, there's also tons of distractions in life. There's other marketers, there's silly cat videos that are gonna grab their attention. Make sure that your follow-up is really speaking their language and speaking to their needs. And this doesn't necessarily have to be nurturing through an email list. This could be nurturing through a Facebook group or on other social media platforms, or maybe you give them the opportunity to get on a strategy call with you where you can get to know them and build that relationship. Let me know in the comments below, what are you doing right now to nurture your leads? If in your business, you're selling something that's high ticket, one of the things that I recommend having in every step of your marketing is the opportunity for them to get on a strategy call with you. Now you can call this different things. It can be a strategy call, an intensive call, a breakthrough call, an onboarding call. And that way you have the opportunity to get to know them. They have the opportunity to interact with you. And on that call is the opportunity to sell them into the next step of your value ladder. This is especially gonna help if maybe they're on the fence about working with you, taking the plunge into one of your offers, because this way you can offer some customized, personalized feedback about whatever their problems are. And also on this call, you're gonna be able to gain market research, know exactly what your audience is asking for. You'll be able to understand their objections, and that way as you're continuing to develop your marketing, knowing what objections that they've said in the past, you can create bonuses or messaging to be able to address those objections before they even come up for your potential client. Now, speaking about bonuses, that's a good lead into me sharing with you my don't miss the bus strategy. This is an acronym for bonus, urgency, scarcity. And these are strategies to help you overcome any objection that your audience might have. The B in bus stands for, like I said before, bonuses. If your audience has an objection, maybe they're saying, well, I'm not sure if this will work for me, or I'm not ready for this because what is the exact objection they have and how can you overcome it? Let me give you an example. I offer video marketing services. I offer courses and coaching programs to help people to scale their business to six and seven figures using video. An objection I've heard in the past is they might say, well, I don't know how to edit videos. I don't have the time to do it and I don't have the money to outsource it. Now, instead of saying, oh, well, I guess this won't work for you and not trying to nurture the sale, what I've done is I've created a bonus that I've added into the offer stack. Here's what I say. If you sign up right now, I'm also going to give you my editing style guides and templates so that if you've never edited a video before, you can just plug and play my templates and this is gonna help you to be able to edit a video in five minutes or less, even if you've never edited a video before. Does that sound intriguing? Well, guess what? I have one more. And if you don't have the time to be able to do that yourself, I'm also gonna give you my content outsourcing blueprint. And this is gonna teach you how you can outsource your editing. Even if you don't have a lot of money to do it, I'm gonna share with you how I got my first video editor for $15 a video. Now, do you think that your time is worth more than $15? Do you think that you could generate more than $15 in the time that it would take you to edit the video yourself? Do you think that you'd be able to make more than $15 with these video assets that can be generating leads to your business all day, every day? 
Hopefully that's a yes. And that's a great objection buster to be able to help them make the decision to purchase your product or service. The you in the don't miss the bus strategy is for urgency. Now urgency gives them that little tension that they feel when the doors are closing, when they're going to miss that window of opportunity. And a way that you might implement this is if you say the doors are closing Friday at midnight and you've got to make that purchase decision or else the doors are closed. This is not available anymore. And what happens is you might find that you're going to get the most sales in those last few hours. Those stragglers, the procrastinators, the people who are trying to make a purchase decision, they feel that tension increasing and it's in a good way that it's helping them towards making that sale. And if you don't have urgency on this, if it's something that's just open and available 24 seven, they'll have no reason to act fast thinking, oh, I'll get it next week. But in that time, what can happen is they'll get distracted. Maybe another marketer offers them a similar product and they invest money there instead of in yours. So get good at creating urgency in your offers. Now the S in the don't miss the bus strategy is for scarcity. I'm sure you've experienced this yourself. Have you ever had your favorite band coming to town and you know that there's only a certain amount of tickets available at this venue. So when those tickets go for sale, you have your credit card out, you are ready to buy. And as soon as those tickets become available, you grab them because you know they're going to sell out quickly. You can implement the same thing in your business. Maybe you say you only have five spots available and after those five spots are gone, they're gone. Now disclaimer, it's really important that you implement ethical urgency and scarcity, that you're not just saying this or making it up. If you're saying the card is closing Friday at midnight, you make sure it closes Friday at midnight. If you're saying there's only five spots available, make that true. Don't make it so that there always seems to be five spots available, or you keep pushing the date of that close card. Because when your audience loses that level of trust in you, if they see it, well, they told me the cart was closing and now it's not, they may not believe you in the future. And that could hurt the purchase decisions. Now that you know more about how to convert those leads into sales, what if you could turn those sales into an infinite cash flow machine? Well, I've actually set up the whole sequence for you and I call it the infinite cash flow blueprint. If you go ahead and click that link below, I've made it available to you for free.